We've probably all got a pretty good idea about how paper is printed, but what about more complex items? Bestsellers like t-shirts, mugs, phone cases, wall decor, and even pillows. You can't just throw these things through a regular printer, can you? Let's solve this mystery by starting with a classic favorite and consistent bestseller, t-shirts. Welcome to Monster Digital, one of our top print providers. I'm Leah, and we're gonna see the absolute latest and greatest in printing technology. Let's take a look. From warehouse shelves to printing and shipping, both Printify and our trusted partners guarantee that only the highest quality products make it to your customer's doorstep. But what exactly does quality mean? It means that every single one of our print providers uses the latest printing technology and has a tested and proven quality check system in place as your item travels through the production stage. When an order is submitted, it'll be automatically sent using special software to the printer, telling it what design needs to be printed. I'm standing by some of the best printing equipment in the industry, and just look how many there are. Now, the first step here is to scan that QR code that gets married to your item. This QR code then tells the printers exactly what item it is, what color it is, as well as the size of the item. This then allows the printer to use its special technology to automatically choose the best ink settings so that you get the most vibrant print. The item is then placed on the proper size palette and goes into the printer, where the first thing that happens is the pre-treatment. Now, this special technology allows the pre-treatment to be sprayed only where the design will be printed as opposed to the whole t-shirt. Some printers even have built-in automated humidifiers to prevent any ink heads from clogging. Isn't that magical? There are three main types of printing techniques we employ for our products. DTG, or direct-to-garment, is best for things like t-shirts and sweatshirts. This process prints the design directly to the fabric. You'll see that there are two ink carriages inside of the printer. Now, that first one has white ink for darker colored shirts, which need a white underbase necessary for DTG printing sometimes. And again, that technology within the printer knows automatically if we're printing on a black t-shirt, for example. That second ink cartridge will then print all the colors on top of that white underbase if necessary. Once it's taken out of the printer, it goes through another quality check and gets placed onto the drying rack. The item comes out of the drying rack and this QR code will be scanned one final time so that the worker can check the design, the quality of the design, the size, and things like the color. After that, it'll be folded up and placed onto a shelf either to be merged together with any other items part of that order, whether it needs an insert, it'll go on another shelf, or if it needs a neck label, it'll be placed in the proper area. DTF, or direct-to-film, is also used for apparel, or in this case, for neck labels. After the t-shirt is printed, the worker will scan that QR code once more to read the attributes. If the system sees that it requires a neck label, it'll automatically be sent over to these printers. These printers will then print the DTF neck label. So your design is printed on a layer of film, it gets sprinkled with a dusting of adhesive powder, and then that gets dried together before it goes to the heat press. The neck labels will then be cut to size and scanned once more to check for final accuracy. It'll then be heat pressed onto your neck label so that your customers think of your brand every time they put on your shirt. In short, the design is printed on film first, then uses heat to transfer it to the fabric. In the end, we get beautifully printed and branded t-shirts. Now, what about hard or non-fabric items like phone cases and mugs? Or AOP products like socks and blankets, where we aren't printing on only one small area of the item? This is where things get a little heated. With sublimation, another printing technique. We went to another facility to learn more about these products. Let's start with phone cases. So we're at the very beginning stages of a phone case being printed here at Spoke Custom Products. So what happens, your order goes to their system, which automatically feeds your order design to the printer. So the first thing you'll see is that your design starts to be printed out of the printer. And you see these two little color bars. That's actually a quality check to make sure the inks are being absorbed into the paper properly, that the color accuracy is correct, and so forth. And then you'll see a barcode. This barcode follows your product, your design, through the entire process to make sure it's actually the correct product. And the workers will check this through every point of the process from printing 
up through going through the ovens, then through packaging to make sure it actually aligns with what your customer ordered. So our phone case designs have been printed and we've actually brought them out to the production line here now. And what you'll see, our worker here is placing the phone cases on what they call jigs. Those are essentially metal bars to help keep the shape of your phone case. Those jigs are then placed into what's called a nest, which is essentially a mold, again, helping to keep the shape of that phone case. So now he's going to place our printed designs into this nest. It'll snap it shut, and then it goes in line to go into the oven where the heat will kind of sublimate the design onto the phone case. So our design, we saw them go onto the nest or the mold, and now we can actually see them through this little window in the oven. This is the sublimation process at its closest point. Literally the ink from that film where it was printed kind of gets heated into the phone case design. Now phone cases are actually one of the trickiest products to print because they're 3D. That's why we have those jigs and molds. And that's why in here also that film vacuum sucked onto the phone case to get that 3D print. Pretty amazing stuff, right? Let's take a peek at another favorite product, mugs. Behind me, you'll see a line of printers that are actually capable of printing designs for all sorts of different products. Things like mugs, towels, blankets, stainless steel tumblers. Right now though, we're gonna see designs coming for ceramic mugs specifically. And we can actually see here on our paper that it says mug ceramic 11 ounce, so we can identify our product, as well as a barcode that lines up with our order ID. This is the same barcode that workers will check later on in the warehouse as it's being printed onto the actual mug as it's going into the package to make sure it all lines up with your customer's order. So our ceramic mug designs have been printed and brought over to the Fotoba machine, which basically just bulk cuts these designs and they put them into a batch so they can bring them to the employee in the warehouse to place onto the actual mug for it to be heated and printed. So here we have the auto wrapper for our 11 ounce ceramic mugs. And what this does, it really just improves production speed overall. So what he's doing here is inserting these silicone clamps that'll, you put the design in and it wraps the design around the mug. So when it goes through the oven, it really holds that design tight and into place. And so now as he's putting the mugs on, he checks the mugs, the blank mugs, make sure there's no, no cracks or little chips and he dusts it, dusts it for a nice smooth print places it in the auto wrapper, and then he'll see, you'll see our designs that we had from the Fotuba that we cut. And on each design, there are two little red lines that he lines up here to make sure our design is perfectly lined up with the mug. And once each design is lined up, we'll see that they're wrapped automatically. And so now our designs are nice and tight around the blank mug, and he'll place them in line to go in the oven. So our mugs have come out of the oven now, and the first thing that he's going to do is scan that barcode. And now he can compare the design, the design file, to the actual product, okay? Here he's performing a QC check, quality check, and things that he's looking for. He's making sure that the edges by the handle are straight, they're not blurry. He's making sure there's no like scratches or even there could be little splotches on the mug if the, the paper didn't stick correctly, you might see small fibers. So he's checking for things like that, as well as the top of the mug to make sure that the print did design evenly. In the system, he can give it a green check if everything looks good. He can print out a label, we'll know where to send the mug afterwards, puts it in the cup, and then places it on the conveyor belt. The idea for tumblers is very similar, but the process is actually a bit different. So here we're doing our 20 ounce stainless steel tumblers. And you'll notice it's a little bit different than the ceramic mugs because here we are hand wrapping the designs. And the reason we have to do that is because these tumblers are actually tapered. So they're not straight up, but they get wider as they go. So what he's doing here, he's wrapping very tightly the design and then taping it on. We have to get it as tight as possible so that the ink actually goes onto the tumbler uh, as best as possible. Now, in the tape, You'll notice he's taking a paper clip. And he's really sealing off that seam and that makes it again as tight as possible so it doesn't come off as it's going through our oven. Once he's done that, he can fold the tape down and he'll put on kind of these really thick rubber bands. Again, securing on that design. 
Now, before he puts on any of these designs, he does check each tumbler, make sure there's no little scratches or little dents, anything like that. If he notices any minor flaw, he'll put it aside and they won't use that tumbler for any of the designs. Once wrapped, into the oven they go. Let's now see how sublimation works for fabrics, like blankets. We're printing only large blankets here. When it comes to inks, the ink is actually dependent on the printer itself, not the product. So whether you're printing a big blanket, a towel, a mug, a tumbler of some sort, it may actually use the same inks. So here we have our rotary press, which is where they feed the blanket that we printed earlier. So the workers on the other side of this, what they do, they place that big design that we printed, measure it, tape it down, and feed it into the press a little bit, then take our blank blanket, place it on the design, and feed it into the press. Now, what happens on the inside here, as it's pressing, rolling through, there's a big drum, the paper with the print and the blanket will actually start to split. The blanket will come out on this end for our final product, and the paper will kind of be discarded back on the other side. Uh-oh, one of our blankets unfortunately didn't make the cut. We can actually see the print error already as the blanket's coming out. So after our blankets come out of the rotary press, they come for a quality check. So what they check for, they check for the print, obviously, things like creases or what they call a spider web. And here we actually do have an example of a crease. So what happened, the blanket as it was going through the press, it folded over a little bit. So this part actually just didn't get printed. Okay? So they're also checking for things like the thread, the print itself, um, making sure there's no tears, anything like that. And so they're checking also on the screen here, the design, making sure everything is good. Once it passes, we scan that barcode to make sure that this product matches with the customer's order. Our label gets printed so we know where to place it later on. And once it's sealed and packaged very nicely, we can put on our label and it goes onto our conveyor belt where we're gonna prepare for shipping. And what about something smaller, like socks? We are printing socks. The first thing what happens is the sock design is actually kind of printed on two sheets of paper and it's gonna get folded over so both sides of our socks get printed. And then the design will get heated into the socks. Now this heat press gets up to 400 degrees so obviously we're gonna wear gloves and be very, very careful, right? Yes. yes. And the socks will sit in there for about 40 to 50 seconds until that design is absorbed or sublimated into the fabric. Some products might endure what's called a stretch test. Here we are performing the quality check on our socks. And so the first step for any quality check is to scan this barcode to ensure that the design and the product actually match with what we have. And so now we can check for things like whether the, the uh, socks don't have any holes, if there aren't any creases in the print, we're gonna do a stretch test to make sure there's no white. And once it passes that quality check, we fold them nicely and we place them into our little package, print our label so we know where to put it in which bin, and then it can get shipped out to your customer. So that's how sublimation and AOP products are made. But not all AOP products are created equally. Many fall into the cut and sew category. How does that stitch together? Let's find out in our next print facility. So we're in the part of the facility where our designs actually get printed. And this printer here isn't capable of only printing one product. It actually prints all sorts of different products. Things like bags, pouches, sweatshirts, t-shirts, rugs, blankets, you name it, this one machine can print your design. By the time the order gets sent to their system, they're already doing quality checks before, during, and after your design is being printed. Before we print our designs, we actually perform a quality check. First thing that we do is check the paper to make sure that it's nice and smooth. If there are any wrinkles or creases that could actually damage the ink heads. Once we're ensured that the paper is flat, then we perform a signature test, which is testing the colors and the way the ink comes out. As the signature is coming out, we're checking for any blank spots or white spots. This could indicate that one of the ink heads is actually clogged and we would have to perform a wiping test. So that'll clean out those ink heads and then we're ready to print our design. Once we know our printer is in proper order, we can begin printing your design. And as our design is actually coming out of the printer, we're also checking the quality, both eyeballing it to see, make sure there's no lines, no ink splotches, anything like that. 
And then we're also comparing it to the design file we see on the screen here. Once the design is printed, it goes through a drying process in this box here, and then it gets slowly rolled up onto a tube. Once the entire batch is rolled, we put on a tracking code so we can follow the order, and then we can take it over to the transfer area. Here at the transfer station is where our printed design meets our blank product. The printed design is laid out onto the table together with the product, and together they go through a heated drum press. The pressure and the heat together causes sublimation. So the ink dissolves into a gas and then goes onto the blank product. And on the other end, our full printed product comes out. After sublimation, we can begin the cut and sew portion of the products. This is where the cut happens of our cut and sew products. So what happens here is the roll of fabric gets fed into this machine, gets checked by an image scanner, and then the software feeds the cutting machine and cuts out each individual piece we need to sew together. The pieces then get brought over to the sewing station. Depending on the product, it'll get sewn in stages at different stations. Let's look at a tote bag first. So we're getting closer towards the end of our cut and sew process here at the sewing station. This worker here is sewing a tote bag, and the first step is actually to get the handles onto our tote. At the next machine, she's actually sewing the edges of the tote bag so we have a nice smooth edge. And at the third and final sewing machine, we're actually sewing the top of the tote bag, folding it over a little bit so those handles are nice and tucked in. And lastly, we're gonna turn our tote inside out and give it a nice shape to get ready for packing. The sewing process is similar for things like pillows and accessory pouches too. Sweatshirts and other apparel will head to a different station. So at these sewing stations, this is where our products come together. Our t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts. Now, before they get here, they come in several pieces and are sewn together at various stations. First, they'll start by putting the collar together with the arms and the main body piece. Then they'll sew together the body pieces, maybe at the shoulders. And at the final station, they'll sew it all together. The arms to the body, the side seams, the collars, cuffs, the waistband, as well as the hems for any t-shirts and products that are sewn together get an extra look for any loose threads or faulty seams. Once our item has been sewn together, it's brought for a final quality check as well as packaged. So they'll check things like loose threads, make sure there's no holes in the fabrics, and then once that's done, they'll fold it up nicely and pack it up. Now, aren't you glad we take care of all the heavy lifting for you? Shout out to all the amazing people who help make your designs into reality. Finally, let's take an inside look at what makes the inside of your homes truly unique. Wall decor. Wall decor is hot, which is why we're at Sensaria. Let's start with canvases. Once a printer receives your design files, we simply click print and out come your images. And as the images start coming out, a quality check is performed on the ink. They'll look for two main things. The first being banding or any lines in the ink, which could indicate a faulty printhead. They'll also check for any wet ink or glossy areas to make sure that everything dries properly. After printing your designs, they get brought over to the assembly station. So here begins the final assembly of our canvases. Here we'll see that she's performing a quality check and lining up our image with the front side of that canvas. Now you won't see it on our example, but usually you'll see a line that she can line it up perfectly with the edge of that front piece. Once it's lined up perfectly, she'll also check for other things like any debris or if there are any scratches in that image or on the canvas. Once that's finished, she'll feed it through what's called a nip roller that'll help adhere that final canvas to the front edge. After it goes through this first nip roller, it then goes to the next station where it goes into a folding machine that helps fold the edges of your canvas. While it's in there, the back edge will be placed on the machine It'll be checked again for quality to make sure everything's lined up nicely. And then it goes through a second nip roller machine to really adhere that final piece. Then a final quality check will be performed to make sure all the edges are straight, lined up, no scratches, no debris. And then we can package it and send it out for delivery to your customer. In another area, we've got the equipment for posters and framed prints. This is where our posters are printed. But what I wanna highlight is this color bar here. This is what they call a standard, and a new standard is printed every morning so they can check color accuracy and ink accuracy. What they're specifically looking for is whether the ink is either dark enough or if it's too light, 
or they're also checking clarity of the image. And as the images are printing, the worker will then come and cut out each individual image. After the frame is assembled, they'll assemble it together with the acrylic as well as the final print. They'll quickly blast it with some air to remove any dust particles, do a final quality check, checking for scratches or any gaps in the frame, attach the hanging hardware, and then package it up to ship it out to your customer. No matter what the product is or where it's coming from, quality standards remain consistent across the board. Products and designs are consistently being watched by trained eyes and image scanners as they transform into colorful, vibrant pieces. I am almost speechless about the cutting edge technology that we just witnessed. I cannot wait to see what's next. I think we're ready to ship our stuff. You coming with? <laughs>